So tell me how you have your love for ancient mythology. How did you come about starting your own line, um, Common Era? And I took the quiz today, which I thought was so great. I ended up being Athena, which I was so happy about. Um, And sapphires are my birthstone. So it was like this Athena sapphire was the one it it, um, led me towards. But I thought that was so cool and interesting. So tell me kind of about your process and how you developed your line. Yeah, so I mean, I don't come from the fashion world or like the jewelry world. Um, I used to work in uh, B2B technology companies. Uh, That's why I moved from Sydney to Seattle um, in 2016 and then to Chicago and then to New York. Um, And during that time, I kind of grew a little bit disillusioned with the tech world. Like it's it's not that fun. (laughs) It's really hard to feel like you're doing something that means anything. Um, And so, you know, there was just this kind of like, all of these things just happened at once. You know, I was moving to New York, I lost my job um, and I ended up going on vacation with my family because, you know, I lost my job and my mom was like, why don't you come see us? We haven't seen you in years. Um, And so I was like listening to this audio book of the Odyssey uh, which is narrated by Claire Danes, and it's just oh. it's too soothing. It's great. Good to know, um, yeah, I love her. Yeah. Oh my god, just, she just like put me to sleep in the best way. <laughs> um, and so yeah, I just went to a museum and I was listening to the Odyssey um, at the same time, and I was kind of like, oh my god, like I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm looking at all this beautiful ancient jewelry. I'm listening to the Odyssey. Like this is just like this is a sign. I should be doing this. I should try to turn something I'm so passionate about into, you know, a small business where I can do what I want and what I care about every day. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been so rewarding. Although I did launch in like December, 2019. So not the best timing. You're not the only person that I've interviewed over the last like year of the pandemic. That's like, I started my business two months before, or I started during the pandemic, or I was launching, like we had a launch party for April of 20. 2020 and like that didn't happen you know so many people but then the the positive is that they came out of or you know slowly we're all coming out of this being successful still in business still doing really well so you know in in some ways worse timing but in some ways kind of best timing yeah i mean one of the good things is that um it's an e-commerce only company right so it was kind of made for a pandemic exactly Um, you made and, it a lot easier. And like, gear up, like, you know, all the great necklaces and earrings and things that people wanted to wear at the time and still want to wear um, is is really, I would imagine, was probably really good for you. Um, how did you decide to turn this passion into a line? And, you know, kind of like, what, what were your first steps on to, you know, deciding, okay, I want to launch a jewelry business? Yeah, I mean, first it was uh, convincing my husband that I wasn't crazy Um, because, you know, the natural thing when you lose your job is to go and get the same job somewhere else. Yeah. Um, And, you know, I was I was really lucky. I had a lot of savings uh, from when I worked in Australia and I just said, you know what, if I don't do it, then I'll probably always regret that I didn't do it. So at least I should try. Yeah. Um, And so it started with me knowing absolutely nothing about jewelry. Um, And so, you know, I'm like a, I'm a, I'm a a huge nerd. I love learning things. So I bought like every single book that existed on jewelry design and on sketching and stuff like that. And I had, oh my God, I had, I had some of the ugliest jewelry designs like you will ever see. Um, and I'm really glad they didn't move ahead. And I originally was like, oh, I'm going to launch with like 200 pieces. You oh, can have right. like this and this and this. And I quickly learned like, that's not possible. Um, so I ended up launching with like a very small curated line. Um, and that's just slowly kind of grown. Um, and one of the things with the, the goddesses was, I think at the time, everyone was very into Zodiac necklaces, which is still like very, you know, on trend. And I just thought, you know, like, I don't really, I mean, like Aquarius and I don't really identify with that. I'm kind of like, well, I have no control over that. I was just, you know, born on that day. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas with the Zodiac, uh, with the goddesses, it's kind of like, you know what? I have a meeting today and I need to be, you know, super strong. So I'm going to wear my Athena, yeah. like goddess of courage, or I'm going on a date, you know, I'm going to wear Aphrodite. No, so I feel I like you can choose. 
Oh, I love that. And it, and it just like reinforces your power. Um, how did you decide on the nine muses? Did you launch with the nine muses as like the, the signature collection or how did that come about? Because I think that's so interesting. It's also very powerful. It's also very kind of like, um, who doesn't want to identify with some of these people? Like you said, depending on your mood, it really helps you kind of like maybe put that out into the world. Yeah, I mean, so, well, the goddess collection came first and that was all um, Greek goddesses and I launched with that. And then um, Muses came out actually, oh my God, it was like the the worst launch ever. It took so long to happen because of all of the COVID uh, supply chain issues. And then I actually caught COVID the week that it was supposed to launch. And also the week that I became eligible to get a vaccine. So I was just so annoyed. I was like, can you have waited two weeks? Like, Oh my God, that happened to my parents too. They got COVID the week they were going to get vaccinated too. Yeah. It was just such bad luck. And I remember I shot, um, like I take all of the photos for everything myself. And so I was shooting the new collection and I was just like sweating from a fever and I couldn't smell or taste anything. And I was just like, I gotta get this done. I gotta get this done. Um, So it was quite an interesting time to launch a new collection. Um, But yeah, I think it's, the muses are different from the goddesses because the goddesses are kind of like, you know, you can embody a goddess, whereas a muse has traditionally been something that people have called on uh, from since, you know, two, 3000 years ago, people have said at the beginning of, I think it's at the beginning of um, Milton and Homer saying, you know, come to me, muse, inspire me, like give me sacred voice and things like that. So I think it's a really cool thing to be like, oh, you know, I have a big speech and I am so nervous. I'm going to call on Polyhymnia because she's the muse of eloquence or something like that. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing and so different. Like there's lots of jewelry lines out there, but it's so refreshing that this is just like can give you some like power or meaning or you can have it with you, you know, in those times of whatever you're doing in life and you really feel like you're um, using it for, for, for you for like a specific purpose. Is there one, um, one of the items in, you know, one of the pieces in the line that you love that's like your own personal talisman or does it kind of change with what you're doing? <laughs> It kind of shifts, like Medusa is my favorite because I remember when I designed her, I thought no one would like her. Um, like she's, you know, the snake, she, and- the snake woman um, and she's kind of scary. And she, I love that she has all these these seven little emeralds in her hair. Yeah. Um, so I wear her a lot. Uh, I also love Cleo, uh, who's the muse of history, just because I'm such a history nerd. And like I'm more of a history nerd than a mythology nerd. OK. Um, yeah, I just like love Roman history so much and Greek history. Um, and then, yeah, I do wear the Sartor Square as well, which I think has a very, very cool story. What is um, that story? So it's this uh, it's this grid, it's called a, a magic square. Um, and it's got these five words that can be read the same way, like up, up down, across, and also diagonally. Huh. So it's kind of, um, they first found it, well, not that they first found it, but the first known one is from the ruins of Pompeii Uh, and they would like write it um, on top of doors and things like that to ward off curses and to ward off evil and we still don't really know what it means like historians don't know it's five Latin words and some of them just don't really make sense Uh uh-huh but it's been found all over the Roman world. Like the one that, that I use for the Sartor Square pendant is actually from a like ancient, ancient church in um, Apide. I don't know how to say it. It's French, <laughs> Apide, France, somewhere. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. And actually I discovered after I designed it that Christopher Nolan's movie Tenet is actually based on the Sartor Square. Oh, wow. Um, it's like, I, I don't want to spoil the movie for anyone, but like it goes back and forwards and you move through time. Um, and so that's why it's called Tenet, because Tenet is the main word in the Sartor Square. Oh, wow. That's so interesting. Yeah. I didn't, never even knew about any of that. That's so interesting. Was there any um, particular piece in your line that sold, you know, were you were you thinking, oh, this one is going to sell so much better than this one? Was it, Were there some surprises? If so, what were they? Yes, I really thought Athena would be like the number one seller. Um, and I thought Medusa would be the worst. Yeah. Uh, and it's the complete opposite. Medusa is that like far and away best seller. Like 
We've seen her on like celebrities where they didn't even like, you know, reach out to you. Yeah. Anymore. They went like, can I have a free one? They just bought it. Um, and I'm like, oh my God, like, this is, this is so crazy. Um, but yeah, it's far and away the best seller. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Wait, you froze for a second. Ah, we're back. <laughs> okay. Go okay, good. <laughs> I could hear you the whole time, but then I, you were like frozen. Um, oh, that's a good look. And then what is, what's next in, what's next in the collection? Oh, okay. So I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it. I mean, I'm, I'm the boss. I don't have to print it. Yeah, (laughs) it's fine. Um, so what's coming next is actually, um, have you heard of like the jewel acrostic? Mm -mm. Okay. So this is a really cool thing that, um, Marie Antoinette's jeweler actually invented. And so it's basically taking gemstones and spelling things out with them. So A is for amethyst, you know, B is for barrel, C is for citrine. Um, And they used to do it, the Victorians loved it, but they only did two types of acrostic jewelry. One spelled regard, which is like not that fun. Um, And the other one spelled dearest. And it was always in a ring. It was never in anything else. Um, And so when I launched, I actually had these little secret message earrings that were huggies and they spelled dearest uh, in tiny little um, pieces. But what's coming next is I've designed a whole collection that's got like necklaces, cluster rings and everything. Um, And they all say ad astra instead of dearest because, and that, sorry, that means Latin for to the stars. Uh, It's kind of amazing. Yeah, I liked it more than dearest because I feel like I would never buy myself something that says dearest or yeah. regards. It's kind of a gift. And even then, it's not that nice. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, regards. Mommy, like mommy dearest. You're like, Ugh. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I searched for like a year to find a phrase that I wanted to put on it. And I decided on Ad Astra just because I think it's such a nice, like, it has so much meaning. It's so old. Um, Julius Caesar wrote Ad Astra in one of his books. Um, and it just, it's like, keep going, keep reaching. Yeah, no, I, that's, that's such a great message for people to like keep reaching for the stars or like, you know, it can be, it can be for anything. Yeah, I really like it. And it's also, it's, it's a departure from like what we normally do, which is mainly gold for May, um, right. but also custom made to order solid gold, but this is all on solid gold and all with precious gemstones. So oh, wow, it, yeah, right. it's really cool. And walk me through how, Obviously, I, I read about conf- all of your um, stones are conflict free. There's nothing man made. So, how was that road to going about designing your jewelry that way? Very difficult, or you know, was that extremely challenging? I think you know when people are just starting out and they don't have experience in the business, it can probably get lost like along the way trying to make your own path. So, how how was your experience with that? Oh man, it was, it was difficult. Um, There was so much learning to do. Um, I actually found, uh, you know, it would be so much cheaper to make everything in China um, and from, you know, not great materials. And I just, I felt like I could never forgive myself if I did that. You know, I'm I'm pretty tough on myself. Um, And I ended up finding a responsible jewelry uh, council certified uh, studio, which is just, you know, it's the hardest certification to get in the jewelry world. It's like impossible to get, um, you know, that they have done the right thing and they're following all of the right guidelines and they've been audited over and over again. Uh, so that really, really helped. And then my husband is also in the jewelry business. Um, he, he makes a lot of fine jewelry, uh, for a lot of, um, other brands. So he does, he makes my, my solid gold jewelry, but not all of the Vermeer stuff. So that's all made here in New York which is great. Oh, we'll find that's great. And yeah, and you can go and check on it and make sure everything's good. Yeah, it's like it's literally made in his uh, in his studio. Oh, so cool. <laughs> I just go in there and I'm like, what's going on? Where is it? That's, uh, that's fabulous. Um, all right, I'm going to, I guess one last question. Um, we ask everybody, like what are, per, what's particular to you? Like what are things that you never take off you always have with you? It could be jewelry, accessories, it could be a hat. It could be anything. Like, what do you always like have with you at all times that are very particular to you? Um, so I, I have a couple of things here. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I got the email. Um, so I guess my engagement ring, I always have it on. My husband designed it and I love it so much. Um, my wedding ring, of course, because you have to. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I wear the Medusa, which I'm wearing now a lot, which is the little like seven emerald one. So pretty. It's, yeah, I love it so much. Um, and then the Baroque Pearl, I love too. Like I can wear this with just like a white t-shirt and jeans. Yeah, or the pearl a collection I thought was gorgeous. Um, and, well, I'm wearing the earrings too. Yeah, because I never wear earrings because I'm always working from home. So yeah. And they're yeah. gorgeous. Oh, I love them so much. They come in, these are the ruby ones, but I love the opal ones too. Um, Cause I'm from Australia and opal is like, you know, our, our gem um, city is just, covered with like opal stores everywhere um so it's kind of a nice reminder of home yeah um, and then i have some things that aren't common era yeah so i have um this is my favorite perfume in the world it's called uh vetiver maloco by ex nilo uh -huh. and i wore it at my wedding um because i'm like a i i believe in like having a smell for certain occasions because then you always get reminded of it so if i'm going on like a big trip like I got married three years ago, but I'm finally going on my honeymoon in three weeks because oh it's been delayed so many times. Oh my gosh, where are you going? Oh, we're going to Italy. Oh, yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> I just hope it doesn't get canceled. No, it's I don't think so. I think you're probably okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, this it's just like, you can see I've like barely worn it. It's yeah. so fun, but it smells like... Um, it's got that like vetiver kind of um, muskiness, but also it smells like a pina colada and not in a gross, like sweet baby prostitute way. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's really subtle and it just, it makes me really, really happy when I wear it. Um, what else do I have? I had some things. Uh, my Kindle, I always have my Kindle. Yep. <laughs> my favorite thing in the world. And then, um, uh, Aesop, I don't know if you know about these, these Aesop oil blends. No. I mean, I, thought, I love Aesop, but I don't have that. Yeah. You know how you walk into an Aesop store and it just smells incredible? Yeah. So this is what they burn. They have four of them and they're like 30 bucks each. And they're actually like three times the size of a normal, um, like essential oil thing. Yeah. And I just put them in like the Target diffusers and you come home and it's like, I'm in an Aesop store. Like I feel oh so relaxed. Gosh, I'm going to try that. Yeah, it's great. I recommend which What's one's your, this one? Yeah. And this one's a nook. Okay. But I really like the one called Catherine. That's the one Catherine I feel and smells nook. really, really a I'm gonna get that. Amazing. Perfect. <laughs>